I love selling stuff. It's just so good. You should sell your gear. Don't be those people who don't sell their gear. I'm talking to you over here too. Both of you, you and you, sell your gear. Gear. You'll be happy, you'll make a lot of money, and you'll be able to buy new gear, which is even prettier. Welcome everybody, today we are gonna take a look at something that I think every photographer should be doing, uh, which is selling used gear. I talked to so many photographers who have old camera bodies and old lenses that they've been sitting on for years and they have no value anymore, but they just don't sell them because they don't know how or they think that it's too difficult, and I really wanna kind of impart in this video how simple selling gear can be. Now, a couple quick things. My kind of background in selling things comes from my dad. My dad bought and sold gear all the time. He used to do it at pawn shops and that was kind of his way of doing things back in the, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Since I was a kid though, I've been doing it on eBay and, and literally since I was probably 10 years old or 12 years old, I've been buying and selling camera gear on eBay. Not as like a job, but just as a, I'll use a piece of gear. And after that piece of gear has kind of become older and there's a newer version, I will usually buy the newer version and sell the old one to recuperate some of those costs. And it can be a really fantastic way to make some money. Now, one quick way to think about it is that when you buy a piece of gear, say you buy a brand new camera for $3,000, that camera doesn't actually cost you $3,000. Instead, it costs you $3,000, but then also you can subtract off the price that you sell it for. So if you buy it for $3,000 and you sell it for $1,500 and you use it for a couple years, that camera really only costs you $1,500 for a couple years of use, which is actually pretty awesome. Um, I'm a big fan of kind of thinking about things in that way, in that respect. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the process of buying and selling, some things to look out for, some avenues that you can do it on, and kind of a little general overview on what it's involved with the whole process. Thing number one that we need to talk about are selling platforms, the places that you can use to get your gear out into the world in return for money. And there's a number of these, I didn't go into every single little one, but I wanna kinda cover the major ones that I have experience with. The first would be friends and family. I've sold a lot of gear to friends and family. I have a lot of friends who are into photography. They don't really care as much as I do about being on the bleeding edge of kind of tech. So I will oftentimes sell them my older cameras. As a kid, I didn't have as much money. I bought older cameras from people who were selling them, who were buying the newest stuff. So selling to friends and family can be great. A couple little warnings. Sometimes if you do sell to a friend or a family member and something goes wrong with that camera down the line, it's maybe great when you give it to them, but a month later it develops a problem. It's always a little bit of a gray area because you kind of feel bad. You feel like you're responsible for their camera not working anymore, they might feel that way. So honestly, it's not my favorite avenue. I like to kind of sell something, get it out the door. It's working great in that form. They like it, they take it, and if anything develops down the road, that's on them. So that's kind of uh, my hesitation with friends and family. Another avenue would be a sort of forum website or a Craigslist or a Facebook marketplace, somewhere where you're chatting with people and anyone off the street, anyone can kind of communicate with you and you're working with strangers. Those are obviously all also a little bit hesitant for me. Um, Craigslist is fine, but you need to meet in a public place and you never know who you're gonna get. You're gonna get a lot of scammers out there on Craigslist, so I kinda shy away from those as well. If you are active in a forum community, um, as an example, you guys know I do astrophotography. I frequent a forum called Cloudy Nights in the astrophotography world. It's a great forum. In fact, I'll link it in the description. It's a great, great kind of resource if you're an astrophotographer. I've bought and sold a lot of things on there, but I'm very active in that community and I will sell or buy from other active members. So you know you're not really getting scammed because you're communicating with them and you know that they're a, a real active member of that community. Facebook classifieds or Craigslist, you're taking a little bit of a gamble with who you're gonna communicate with. Another resource would be, say, an Amazon or an eBay platform. You can actually be a seller on Amazon. You can also obviously sell things through eBay. There you're gonna be paying a little bit of a premium to Amazon or to eBay to uh, you basically use their platform to sell your gear, but it's very clean in that you literally put the thing in a box, you mail it off to the person who bought it or who won the bidding for it, and then you cut your ties. They give you a good review, you give them a good review. If anything bad happens down the line, uh, that's on them. It's, it's a safe, very clean environment, but again, you lose a percentage for doing that. So that's another way to do it. And then probably the um, easiest on the seller is a website like MPB or B&H, um, link down in the description, KEH, a actual camera store that specializes in buying and selling used gear. And those are great resources because that's very easy for you as a seller. You literally put the camera or the lens in a box, you mail it to them, 
and they send you a check. There's no communication, there's no, a lot of times they'll even give you a prepaid shipping label, like literally in a box, label, slap, boom, bang, out, sweet, right? That's the easiest, but you won't make nearly as much money for one of those straight, you give the gear, you get cash back. They're gonna resell that, so they need to obviously mark down the amount that you get as a seller. So those are kind of the main platforms. My favorite of those is eBay. I'm a big eBayer, but again, eBay has its little nuances. A lot of times people ask stupid questions, things like that, but I find that the best bang for my buck and the best uh, kind of effort level for the reward that I get comes around where eBay is positioned. Now that we've talked about the selling platforms, I wanna talk about the second kind of stage in the process, which is estimating the value of your items. And there's lots of ways to do this. Obviously, if you're planning on giving your items to B&H or to KEH or to MPB, one of those websites, you can go on their, on their website and fill out a little form where you say what you have, what condition it's in, what accessories it includes, and they'll email you or even just give you a estimate on how much they'll pay you for that item right there on the website. So that's a great way to do it. Um, I also like to use the eBay advanced search function. That's very simple. You go on eBay's search, you click on the upper right hand corner next to the search box. There's a little advanced button. You click on that and then you can enter your search terms. You can enter exclude words and then you can also check two very important check boxes which are auction only and sold items because that will basically filter through all of eBay and it'll get rid of the buy it now stuff. Buy it now is never a great indicator of what you can expect to receive for something if you were to sell it. Auction will usually give you more. So I like to limit to only auction, and I like to also limit to items that have already sold. So you're actually looking in the history of eBay at what's been sold in the past few months, and that'll give you a really good idea. Also, you can exclude terms. So a lot of people will maybe be selling a, let's say a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. That's the version one, not the version two. Maybe you wanna upgrade to the version two. You can actually put in the exclude these terms in two capital I's for two, version two, how Canon does their little nomenclature on their, on their cameras and their lenses. And that will exclude the version two so you can really specifically see the value of the 70 to 200 version one from Canon. So that advanced search on eBay is a great thing. One thing to keep in mind though with eBay, if you plan to sell things on eBay, you're gonna take a 10% hit because eBay takes 10% off the top and then PayPal will usually take an additional 3% plus an additional dollar. So you gotta build that in as well um, just because of the way those platforms work. So usually look at that eBay kind of estimate and then take 13% off of that. And that's about what you can expect to be receiving if you sell your item on that platform. Number three is estimating the item condition. This is very important because you want the receiver of your item to be very happy with its condition. I always like to kind of look at the item and if I think that it's excellent condition, I will go one under that to great condition and that's what I will claim on the listing. I really want someone to open the box and be like, wow, this was described as being worse than it actually is. That's a win for me because that's, uh, you know, making someone really happy. Now, will you make quite as much if you under-describe your items? No, but I think it's worth it to have a really good reputation, especially if this is something you plan on doing a lot, which I do, literally I've been doing it since I'm 12. So having that good reputation is important. Another thing, if your item has a scratch or a dent or a problem with it, claim that in the listing, make it front and center, make it big, make it bold, say this item has a scratch on the screen or this item doesn't work because of X, Y, Z. You don't wanna hide that stuff. Make it front and center because it will help so much with clarity with everyone it just makes the process so much smoother if someone gets your item and they decide that it's not what you described you have to return it and it's, it's just not a great thing so under describe things and make things front and center if there are any problems with the item make it sound worse than it is and i'm serious about that not a lot worse but just a little bit it'll really help people be really happy with what they receive from you good little tip right there mm. Number four is cleaning and photographing your item. Make sure you clean it, people. There's so many listings on eBay and on Facebook. Craigslist is probably the worst for this, but just listings that are poorly photographed. They took a photo of like this nasty scratched up device with like cookie crumbs on it and smears and stuff. Don't do that. Just take the like 
three minutes that it takes to clean your item, make it look spiffy, take some nice pictures. I actually usually just use a big window. I have a window in my house and I've got a nice countertop like this. I put the item on the counter with the window behind me acting as just a big old soft box. And I actually use my smartphone with a, with a lot of available light. My iPhone, just boop, 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 take a few photos, post them. It looks very professional, takes five minutes, very, very easy. Take the extra time. You literally will make way more on your items if you're willing to take the extra five minutes to clean them and to photograph them well. Don't just like in your dimly lit carpeted floor with like dust on the carpeting and little like schnoz over there. Don't do that. Take the time to take a good photograph, especially if it's photo gear. Yeah it's important. One other thing I should mention on the topic of cleaning and photographing is keeping the boxes and everything that comes with the item. Whenever I get a new camera or a new lens, the first thing I do is unpack the box, take out anything that I actually want. So like I don't use the included camera strap usually, I don't use the little pop-up flash that sometimes comes with them. I'll take out the pieces that I want, I'll put everything back in the box, I'll close the box up and I'll put it down in my basement. And I leave it down there until I'm ready to sell it. And that way when I want to sell it, I bring the box up, I open it and all the stuff, the instructions, the bags, I even keep the bags, I keep everything in that box. When I go to sell it, everything's there. And it's so awesome when you can ship that item off and tell the buyer that the box is included. Literally makes like, you might make 50 bucks, 25, 50 bucks extra just by including the box in there. So I really, really recommend that. It makes a huge difference in the final sale. Every little thing we can do adds up as a seller to make your reputation good and to get more money for your items. Part five is listing your item. Actually, posting it out there on the world. I like to think of the listing as a few different steps. Number one is creating a good title. You want to very clearly describe what item you're listing, be very honest about its condition, and if possible, mention the included accessories in the title of the listing. I find that very helpful. Description should be very brief, but also very kind of descriptive, obviously, why it's called a description. Make it very descriptive, talk about the item's condition, any problems that it has, talk about how you would like to receive payment, how you plan to ship the item, if shipping is part of this, obviously depends on the platform. Be very, very descriptive and give them everything that they need to hear. Photography and taking good photos would be another important thing and then shipping would be last. On shipping, when you're creating your listing and talking about shipping, and obviously this is only talking platforms that support shipping, which would mostly be eBay or Amazon. If you're talking shipping, you wanna be very clear and you also want to use a shipping service that is convenient for you. So for me, I work about two blocks from a post office. So my favorite way to ship things are USPS flat rate boxes. It's a flat fee. I know how much it's gonna cost to ship anywhere in the United States. I can pop the thing in the box, close it up, print a label on eBay through PayPal, however you wanna do it, and send it off. There's no like, oh, it's gonna cost $400 instead of $300 for shipping and you have to let the buyer know and they need to send you more money. It's very easy. You know what it's gonna cost and it's, it's straightforward. Another thing I should say on shipping is some items that are so big and bulky, it's not worth to ship. Sometimes you will literally run into something that's just not worth the shipping cost. So if that runs, if you run into that, just maybe try to sell the item locally so you don't have to worry about shipping. The other really nice thing about United States Postal Service flat rate boxes is that they are insured up to $50 for free, which is awesome. Obviously, you can tack on additional insurance if need be, but the boxes themselves are free. You can go to the post office and get like stacks of boxes or order them online, and the boxes are free. So you can just leave a stack of those in your house, fold them up, tape them together, pack the stuff in there, mail it off. There's no like have to go find the right size box and pay someone for a box. It's just a free box. You put it in there. As long as you're mailing it with USPS Priority Mail, it is free to do. So shipping's awesome. Turnaround time's important. Obviously, try to get the item turned around within a day or two of when they buy it. On eBay, specifically as a platform, you have to claim what your turnaround time is. Aim for whatever you can do, but be realistic. Don't say two days and take three days. You want to over-deliver on your promises. Get that good reputation because this is something you're going to do again and again and again. Once your item has been listed on whatever source that is, Craigslist, eBay, wherever you're doing it, you're gonna wait. And obviously this is kind of one of the hardest parts. Um, a little disclaimer and warning, you will get a lot of, uh, in some cases, dumb questions from potential buyers. And you will try to get kind of people trying to scam you, especially on eBay and Craigslist, I find, of all the different platforms. Um, on eBay, you're gonna get a lot of questions from people who seem like they don't know a lot about the product. Um, as an example, I actually have a tripod listed on eBay right now. And I got a question 
a couple days ago that was what's the maximum weight capacity of the tripod? Something that's completely Googleable, but you just kind of wonder why people ask you. Uh, but anyway, as long as you're okay with that, it's fine. You'll also get a lot of questions on eBay for people who want to pay you X amount of dollars to buy the item right now. And unfortunately, that actually breaks eBay's terms of service. Um, unless you can add a buy it now to the item and actually sell it through the eBay platform, it violates their terms. So that's actually a good rebuttal is kind of making sure you research things when people ask you to do something on eBay and coming back, firing back with, no, sorry, I'm not willing to do that because it breaks eBay's terms or just because I'm not willing to. So just kind of be on the lookout for that. Craigslist, you'll get a lot of people who are like, hey, my, uh, I need to, my moving company is going to come pick this up. I'll pay you double for your trouble. Anytime that kind of stuff happens, just shy away from it. It's not a legitimate interest in your item. Really stick to people who have like local area codes on Craigslist or on eBay who seem to be buying, who seem to be responsible and who are willing to go along with the normal eBay process of wait seven days, bid on the item, winner of the item takes it. Uh, it's very, very simple. If they're asking you to do anything other than that, I would be a little bit cautious and a little bit hesitant. So once you've waited, your item will be sold, whether that's just someone wanting it on Craigslist or the auction ending on eBay, whatever it is, you will have sold your item, which is awesome. Uh, the money will be put into your account and, and this is kind of, I'm going to talk eBay for a minute. Uh, the person will pay and only once they've paid, will you ship the item. Don't ship it before you've received payment. And if you're selling on eBay, eBay makes it really easy to print a shipping label, you just hit the print shipping label button and you print a shipping label. You pack it up, tell them the weight, tell them the size. If it's a flat rate box, you don't need to worry about the weight. You put the item in there, you put the shipping label off and you send it off and hopefully you exchange good reviews with the other person. If it's a different platform, uh, shipping is depends on what it is. Craigslist, usually it'd be a local meetup. You'd meet some in a, in a public place somewhere and exchange cash for that item. Obviously, if you're on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or something like that, I would really stick to a cash only deal. You're going to get people asking if you'll take a cashier's check, just don't do it. Make sure you're receiving good cash from that person for the return of the item, for giving them the item. Really just be careful. There's a lot of people out there who are really good and really professional at doing this kind of stuff. And then there's some people who will just inevitably try to scam you. So just be on the lookout. That's all I'm saying. A couple final notes, I guess I would say are one, keep records between you and a potential buyer. Um, if you have a email correspondence or a, a eBay message, correspondence, whatever it is, keeping that message list is important. Um, I had an eBayer try to scam me a while ago and I was able to give eBay my whole history of messages with that person and they were able to very clearly see that this person was trying to scam me as a seller. So keeping a hold of that is important. Also, if you can pay, say you sell something on a forum website, that's not a like, you know, it's just a forum site. So there's no like buyer seller protection natively. If you can, when you're doing on a forum site, have the person pay with PayPal because if they do that, you're actually eligible for PayPal's seller protection. You're protected as a seller, which is really powerful. And if they do try to scam you as a buyer, they can. Um, and PayPal will hope, hopefully, hopefully protect you. And that's the hope. But again, if that transaction can get run through PayPal or cash, obviously, those would be the two most preferable ways to kind of do that sort of transaction. I guess I'll end with this. I would say that if this whole idea scares you, the softest way you can kind of enter into it is again with a website like B&H or KEH or MPB, which are all linked down in the description. Go on those websites, type out what you have, tell them your information, say I have this item, it's in this condition, it comes with these accessories, and see what you could get for it. It's, it really is as easy as like putting it in a box, mailing it off, and they send you a check. It's kind of magic. It's like free money for gear that you potentially aren't even using. I really encourage you as a photographer to consider this. Think of using, selling your used gear in return to help you buy new gear. It's a great way to kind of do a turnaround. Those items get used by someone who's going to care for them versus sitting unused in your cabinet. So hopefully this has inspired you to go sell some gear. Do it. It's awesome. Uh, you get free money for gear that you're not even using. So I highly recommend you do it and you get to keep up to date with the newest stuff. Depreciation is a thing. The longer something sits unused in your camera bag, the more it's going to depreciate. You might as well sell it, get it out the door and make a little bit of money. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. You disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question, comment, concern, video idea, leave it in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe up there in the corner or down there in the corner to stay up to date with our future content. Lastly, a special thanks to Canon. They are the sponsor of this video. They let us use these wonderful cinema cameras to make this great content. So thank you, Canon. You're linked down in the description as well. If you guys want to check Canon out and what they have, what cool products they make, that is down there in the description. Thanks for watching, everybody.
Woo! Pachow!